who was the bigger disappointment going into Saturday on the season, LSU or A&M, well, there's now a clear-cut number one. It's LSU. What a game between Texas A&M and Alabama, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Georgia, Auburn, Kentucky winning over LSU. It was quite the SEC weekend. It was. It was. Uh, you know, it was the first weekend I didn't go on the road. I stayed home and and covered the games from the TV. I thought it would be easier, but I ended up working harder than, than any uh, game I've been to. I was at it uh, all day, but it was it was fun. The Ole Miss game was was awesome, and then the uh, I didn't see the Alabama game coming. Obviously, I I told you guys I wasn't going to College Station because I didn't think it was going to be a game. Obviously, I should have joined y'all at the Dixie Chicken, but uh, <laughs> not a game. So, Glenn, is it is it just not if but when now for Ed Ogeron after that loss where they weren't all that competitive in Lexington, Kentucky on Saturday night? I, I think it's about ninety percent. That way, I mean, conceivably, if he if he beat Florida Saturday morning and 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 starts a, you know a little winning streak, um, and gets to seven or eight wins, he has a chance. I mean, if he wins Saturday, he he has a chance. Uh, but uh, you know, if he if he loses Saturday and then loses again to Ole Miss, uh, you know, it, it it could happen during the season. Though um, I I think. Um, I think Scott Woodward may may try to keep him um, for the end, to the end of the regular season, or at least late in the regular season, because there's no one, there's really no one that would be a good interim coach on staff. You know, we threw this question out on our Outkick the Tailgate show, but who was the bigger disappointment going into Saturday on the season, LSU or A and M? Well, there's now a clear cut number one. It's LSU. I'm curious your opinion on this. How much did the A and M win over Alabama hurt Ogeron and LSU from from that respect? And do you think that A&M found something in this game where now they're going to start to recover their season and be a lot better moving forward? Or was that just a one-night, crazy circumstances, blip on the radar for 2021? Well, I don't I don't think so. I mean, you know, one of the toughest things for a coach to do, and, and Steve Spurrier actually said this once, is once things start going bad in a season, it's really hard to kind of flip, to use a Coach Orgeron term, and, and that's what Jimbo did. I mean, because their offense against Arkansas, I was at that game, they were awful. And then they lost to a pretty bad Mississippi State team. So the way he was able to flip that script and, and get his assistants to, uh, to keep the players buying in and come up with a great game plan against Alabama's offense, Elko, the defensive coordinator, what, what a blitz package. They, they didn't figure it out until the third quarter. Um, you know that that that's the coaching job of the year right so far by uh, by Jimbo Fisher, um, and you know Coach Orgeron has done that type stuff before. Uh, he he flipped his script in the uh, in the 2017 season, lost to Troy, 20 point underdog Troy, lost bad to Mississippi State, and he and he flipped it against Florida, and then he beat Auburn at home after losing 20 to nothing in the second quarter. So he's done it before, but it, it, it uh, and it looked as bad then, you know, so, and he did it last year when he went into Florida and beat the number six Gators as a three and five team uh, LSU was. So it'll be interesting to see how he does, but I, I don't, I wouldn't relate that A&M win to the, to the LSU situation. No. 